No my hara mai, hara mai, hara mai, hara mai. Welcome to the Render Gathering this morning. I'm Pastor Colin Thompson. I'm glad you could share this time with us today. This is the last portion of this series, and really it's about money. But you know, we don't, we just don't want to talk about money. We've been talking about the Word of God. We've been talking about a little bit about this and a little bit about that. But you know, today I want to talk to you about stewardship. Stewardship is about how we manage the resources that God gives us here on earth. Why is it important to God? Because what he gives us is important in helping us to know him and helping us to be able to survive and to love him and serve him while we're here on earth. You know, I believe God gives us what we need. And I remember when I was young, my parents were my first employers. They were the ones that gave me my first job. They weren't in business, but they were in the business of the home. And so my first um, 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 series of work was done when my mum and dad sat down and made us a list of chores that we could do in the home and around the house and in our gardens outside and and and, and our crops that we were growing down the back and in our eels and in and, and the streams and all of that sort of thing and they were each one of those jobs was attached a certain amount of money and I learned at an early age to to save money my mother made me open up a bank account and me and my brother we got other jobs but we were starting to put money away for us and my sister and we were saving it for a rainy day we were learning some of the values of of basic economics you know that what you get in has to sustain you you know to live but you can't have debts more than what you need to live on and that's a very basic principle so all my life i thank god for my mum and dad teaching me some of those basics and when i got to school i learned a bit more in um, business um, and as you grow older you learn about how to manage money but what's important always is what we've been dealing with in the scriptures where jesus says to us very clearly not to store treasures up on earth not to get a point where you live beyond your means and you have more than you could ever use but you don't use it for the benefit of and the extension and the glory of God and the kingdom of God and to help and serve other people. If you you indulge yourself, if you keep it just for yourself, then you bought you you move into the realm of greed and lust. And the Bible says that's a sin. You don't want to go there. You know that's so more uh, so much more exhilarating and 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 you get so much more blessing when you can help others rather than just receive and take and take for yourself you know what i'm talking about i hope because when you help someone else there's a greater sense of purpose and and satisfaction and significance that comes to your life this is what god wants from us he doesn't want us to just you know be lonely and have everything we want and have all the positions we want and be wealthy and all of that and we have no one to share that with go through broken relationships after broken relationship you know have our own problems money doesn't buy you happiness so stewardship is important how we manage what God has given us to his honor and glory and we talked about that in Matthew chapter 6 and verses 19 to 21 where he says don't don't store up treasures on earth where rust and moth destroy or vermin, and he said, where thieves will break in and steal, but store up treasures in heaven, where rust and moth and vermin cannot destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Isn't that great? You know, the greatest investment place is in heaven. You know, we talk about, you know, that even in our natural lives, we think about where's the most secure place we can put those things that we deem treasures, gold, if it's, you know, stored away, you know, people build huge bunkers underground and they have the greatest surveillance systems. But, you know, thieves, it doesn't matter in history, will always be able to steal. People can hack, you know, computers, people can hack finances electronically. Nothing really is secure. But even now, when we store things up, we need more and we need more. How many of you have got, you know, storages on your devices and you're, you've now learned a new um, storage um, 
word which is called the cloud. Isn't that interesting? You know, when we run out of storage space, we need more. Do you really need more? That was interesting because I went through some of my files and some of my old stuff and I thought, gee, I don't even really need all this stuff, but I, I needed more space. I need more storage. We we're always saying that. We've got this insatiable desire to have more and more storage because we think that we're going to need this. You know, when you die, when you leave this world, none of that matters anymore. You know, you can have all your photos in the cloud. You can have all of your documents in the cloud. You can keep accumulating more and more and upgrading your cloud account. You know, you see what I'm saying? We want more. But, you know, the Bible says store up things not in the cloud. It says store up your treasures in heaven. You see, that's the securest place of all. That's the place where nothing can touch it. Thieves cannot break in and steal. No hackers on earth can actually tap into that and send viruses and download stuff that is, is secure and, and, you know, not for other eyes to see. It's in heaven. And I talked to you last time about how do we make those deposits. We make those deposits quickly, simply by our obedience to God by trusting God, by serving God, by doing what pleases Him. And then secondly, by our relationship we have with Him. Those are the deposits we make from earth to heaven. And those are the treasures that you and I should be focused in, friend and brother and sister in Christ, if we're serving God. How are we pleasing Him? Are we being obedient to God? Are we doing His will on earth? You see, all of these things are important. And so I want to talk to you away from Matthew 6, uh, because it says there, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. I hope your heart's in heaven. I hope it's not in the cloud. I hope it's not in your bank account. I hope it's not in the garage, you know, with all your treasured cars. I hope it's not, you know, in any other form of wealth or treasure. But I hope your heart, not, not saying you can't have those things, but I hope it's not anchored in there. Should the time come and death will do that for you to say you've got to leave it all behind. You can't take it with you. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 said this, The God of this world, the God of this age, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. What is the treasure we store up in heaven? It is the glory of God. It is the glory of God. We bring glory to God on earth and we deposit that and it is automatically transferred and recorded in heaven. But the God of this world, you see the, the contrast again? That is Satan. That is the, 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 the spirit of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers. So they cannot see the value of what we store in heaven. We cannot see the value of the glory of God and the purpose and the meaning of our existence and whom God really is and how we should have a relationship. with. We're blinded. Some of you right now can't see that, haven't been able to see that. But I'm praying that God will open your eyes right now in the name of Jesus so that the light of the gospel will shine so you can see the glory of Christ who is the image of God. And if you read a little bit further down in chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, I'll read it for you. You get to uh, verse 6. It says, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made His light shine in our hearts. In our hearts. Where is your heart? Remember, where is your heart? God makes light shine in our hearts to give us, listen to this, the light of the knowledge of God's glory. To give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory. What is the treasure that we are to store in heaven that Jesus talks about? It is the knowledge and the light of God's glory. And it said it is displayed in the face of Jesus Christ. So when we believe that Jesus Christ came, that he lived and he died and on the third day rose again on the cross of Calvary from the grave, we acknowledge he is the savior of the world. He is our savior. His death and his provision on the cross forgives us and cleanses us from sin. It brings us back to God and we now can engage in that relationship and Entering again and through the knowledge of Jesus Christ, we enter into God's glory and we start making deposits in heaven. You see, Matthew 7 tells us, in that day they will come and stand before me and they will say, you know, I've done this, I've done that and I've done this. And Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, 
you workers of iniquity. God wants to know you. God wants to know me. And our relationship with Him is the treasure we store in heaven. I can't say that enough. It says, and it goes on to say this, but we have this treasure. This is verse 7. We have this treasure in jars of clay. You and I, jars of clay, have this treasure in us. What is that treasure? What is the treasure linked to the deposits in heaven? It says this, listen, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from ourselves. Everything we have in this world, put it in its right context. Get your location right. Everything we have is the surpassing power. All of creation, all of possessions, all of wealth, all of our loved ones, all of our life and our very being comes from God. And it is nothing to do from us. The God of this world will blind us and is blinding the world now to say to people as I close that the treasure you look for is on earth. That this is all there is. That there is no God. That there is nothing beyond that. That when you die, you die. So eat and drink and be merry because tomorrow we die. Friend, that's a lie from the pit of hell. I want to tell you right now that Jesus Christ is calling you and asking you to come to him. He wants you to make those regular, weekly, daily, minute deposits into the kingdom cloud which is in heaven where neither rust or moth or vermin can destroy and neither can any thief enter and steal. That's the investment I pray you will make today. The greatest investment for your life is not from your insurance broker. It's not from taking the best interest rate from the bank. It's not investing in this company or that company to get the best return. The best thing you can do for yourself today, friend, whether you're rich or poor, whether you have much or very little, is to invest your life in relationship with Jesus Christ. Obey Him, please Him, trust Him, and I pray God will continue to bless your life as you go forward. May God bless you today, uh, today, and uh, and may He take that you know that invitation that we offer you at the end of this this um, message today to give your life and heart to Jesus. May you take it seriously. It's coming up after this, and may God bless you. I'm Pastor Colin Thompson. We are the Render Gathering, helping you become. Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for choosing me. And I ask today for your forgiveness. I ask that you come into my life and replace anything that is not of you. I give over all of my behaviors, my thoughts, and my heart to you today. I receive your forgiveness, and I receive the salvation that is mine through Jesus Christ. I believe that you came. I believe that you died. I believe that you were buried. I believe that you rose again. I thank you for being my saviour and I thank you for this chance to walk with you and for you to walk with me the remainder of my days. I give you thanks and say Amen.